Let's look at how we make measurements and how we use estimation while making those. I have on the screen here a couple devices that might be used to make measurements. Uh, the first device is a scale, so that would measure something that we put on it in pounds or ounces or grams. Uh, the second device looks like a digital thermometer that's telling uh, temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. And the third object looks like a digital speedometer um, measuring in miles per hour and maybe also tracking miles, it looks like. Here are a few more devices. These devices have a different scale, though. Um, might take a little more effort to get a number off of a scale like one of these. The first one is a balance uh, used to measure the mass of objects in grams. It's got three sliders on it, so it's called a triple beam balance. Um, this next object here, that's a thermometer as well, measuring in degrees Fahrenheit and degrees Celsius. Uh, the next object says ALT on it. That must be an altimeter used to measure the altitude of something in feet. And then down below that object, this looks like it's measuring in KPA. So that must be a pressure meter. Um, inside scale is in KPA. The outside scale is in PSI or pounds per square inch. And then the last object is a very familiar object to us. That's a ruler. It looks like it has inches on one side and centimeters on the other side used to measure lengths or distances. We're familiar with some of these measuring devices. In fact, you've probably used them before. We are gonna go over how you get good measurements, not from a digital scale. So the digital scales, of course, just spit out a number for you and you write that down. Uh, but how you would use something like these devices that has have analog scales on them. So they require, again, um, some estimation. We're going to start. Um, we're going to start off measuring an object on here. Let's look at this pink eraser using this centimeter ruler. This ruler is um, uses centimeters. A little bit easier to use than maybe one that uses inches and fractions of an inch. This one measures in centimeters cm, and so each centimeter is marked off with a number next to it. So it looks like this object is more than a centimeter, but not quite two centimeters. Then it also has smaller lines. Those smaller divisions, there are 10 equally spaced divisions. So you can call them tenths of a centimeter, or those are also known as millimeters. And so again, those smaller lines are measuring in millimeters and the larger lines in centimeters. We generally will pick one of those units to make our measurements in. We're going to measure this in centimeters, and then we'll record that in centimeters, cm, and we'll have a number that goes with it. You can tell this object is beyond the one, so we know that that is one of the parts of this measurement. But just calling it one centimeter is not very precise. That's only got one digit in that measurement. And really, uh, it doesn't accurately describe the length of this. Now, it's pretty close to one and a half, this big mark here. We usually call it a half, but it'd be better to call it 0.5 centimeters. But to call it 1.5 centimeters is not very precise as well. Um, also, it's, it's not quite accurate. This is a little bit shorter than 1.5 centimeters. So when measuring this, we would look at each of the smallest divisions. Again, those are tenths. So we can write that as a decimal number. The tenths place is here. And this object is uh, more than 1.1 or 1 in 1 tenth, more than 1 in 2 tenths, more than 1 in 3, and more than 1 in 4, but not quite 1 with five tenths. I'm going to call it 1.4 tenths of a centimeter. And then again, it's beyond that. It's beyond 1.4, but it's not 1.5. So this is where the task of estimation comes into play. Your task when you're reading an analog device like this is to get the best measurement you can. And that generally means taking the smallest division that on this um, ruler, the smallest division is that one millimeter division mark there, and breaking it up into even smaller divisions in your mind's eye, 
and estimating which of those lines the object lines up with. So if I could break this into 10 small divisions, it's going to be kind of hard to draw here, but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then my job is to figure out which of those lines this object aligns with. And because it's about halfway between the 1.4 and 1.5, I might just estimate that as 1.45 or maybe even more accurately, 1.44 centimeters. Let's talk about the numbers I just wrote down. Some of those numbers I am certain of. I am certain that that pink eraser went past the one centimeter mark. So this digit here, that one, that's a certain digit. And I'm also certain that it's past the fourth line, not to the fifth line. So. 0.4, that's a digit that I am certain of. Those two digits we call certain digits. But that last four that I thought might be a five, that last digit is what we would call an uncertain digit. Sometimes that's known as an estimated digit. Okay. So the one and the first four are certain. I know those, but the last one was estimated. That's an uncertain digit. Your goal when, the, when making measurements is to always estimate one more digit than the device gives you. Let's apply that to this uh, gray shaded object. Uh, this gray shaded object uh, definitely goes past the one and the two centimeter mark. And so uh, when I write down the length of this object, I know that it's at least two centimeters. And then I also see that it lines up with the fifth line after the two. So it's not to the three centimeter mark. It's somewhere bigger than two. And using the lines, I can see it lines up with the fifth line. So it's going to be 2.5. Now, a lot of students would just write that down and be content with that. But remember, we always want to estimate one more digit than we get from the device. This ruler is telling me it's the two and the, the 0.5 centimeters for the length. But what about our estimated digit? What's the next digit I should write down? Well, when I estimate this, it doesn't really go beyond the 2.5 centimeter mark. So how would I estimate that? Well, I still want a digit there, but it's not any of the lines past that. So the digit that I use is a zero. 2.50 is the best way to describe this. Let's look at one more object. Uh, in my next object, I've got the same ruler. And when you're using the same measuring device, a good rule of thumb is you should always end up with the same level of precision. Notice that I just made two other measurements with this same ruler. One of them was 1.44 centimeters and one was 2.50 centimeters. Both measurements are to the hundredths of a centimeter place. So how about this gold object? So the length of this gold object, I can see it's up to the two centimeter mark, but applying that same rule of thumb, we should estimate digits here. Which line is it beyond the two centimeter mark? Is it to the 2.1? Is it to the 2.5? Is it to the 2.8? It's not to any of those lines. It's actually lined up with the first line, which corresponds to a 2.0 mark. 2.0 centimeters. Now, recall that our other measurements all gave us one more digit to the hundredths place that we generally want to estimate one digit beyond what we can read off the measuring device. So again, I ask, what number should I put here if it's lined up right on the two? Some people would be content with just writing 2.0, but in science, we can show the level of precision an instrument has by how many digits we record. And we've seen we can record to the hundredths place on the other two. We should record a digit to the hundredths place here as well. That should be written as 2.00 centimeters. This accurately reflects the length of the object 
to the correct degree of precision, to the correct number of digits. All right, that is how we make measurements using a centimeter ruler. I've got a couple examples down here below that I would like you to take a look at. See if you can apply those general rules of thumb with the same ruler again to find the length of four different objects here. Object A, my, my black line, what would you record for that length for object A? Recalling that each of these should give us a measurement that goes to the hundredths place and gets labeled in centimeters. All right, repeat that for object B and object C and object D. Record the lengths of each of those objects. Hopefully this helps you as you're making measurements using analog scales.